thank you so much. Um, uh, I am really humbled to appear in your show this evening. Um, I thought by now people should have been tired of my story. Um, I have a story that is meant to encourage young people, but can easily be intimidating also uh, for some who will begin to say, how do I ever start to get to this place? Um, but it's all about your mindset. It just all have to happen in your mind. Let me first say that my name is Cosmas. Mada Buchuku is a Varakala name that means man is not God. My mother gave me name by inspiration. Um, I have a humble beginning. Um, Sometimes I tell my story. I can easily break down if I can be emotional. Uh, a young man at the age of four. Uh, my parents live in Prato State. Uh, um, and we live in Georgetown. That was where I was born. Um, I, at the age of four, I still could recollect that my father, the best I remember of my father is, you know, uh, carrying me up in his bed, a bed that is not more than two feet that in the eyes of a small child of my age, that time it looks like six feet bed, you know, dragging me up there. I remember riding in his car to go and buy bread from uh, the white, those that expatriates are living in Plateau State everywhere, you know, bakery. Then the next thing I recall that is very vividly about my father, the best memory I remember was a day in our uh, family home in the village in the Newe. It was like a festival. And uh, people were coming, masquerade, we are dancing. And, you know, it was, a, it was a happy day for me in the eyes of a, a child. In those days, we eat rice on a Christmas day. You know, rice that everybody ate today is, uh, used to be really special food. We, you need to pretend you are sick to be able to eat rice. So otherwise, you, if you get a yam, you should be happy. Or every other thing is, you know, you swallow gari. Um, but I saw my father, you know, well dressed up in a black suit with a bow tie, lying in a bed. And I witnessed my mother's hair was scattered. And she was one corner of the wall, crying helplessly. And I was wondering, what is making this woman unhappy? This is a, a fara going on in our compound. I haven't seen this kind of masquerade coming and people trooping in and people are shoot, shooting double barrel and I will take the shells of the double barrel and try to smell them and have some funny uh, feelings or smell out of them. One unique thing is that people were very kind to me. So if I wanted rice eight times that day, I was able to eat it. Anytime they asked me, what do you want to say, rice? So, and uh, I felt this to continue and will be forever. It was later in my life I got to know that that was the barrier of my father. That was the best memory I have of him. Uh, the rest is history. How my parents have four kids in quick succession is a miracle and only known to them as if my father knew something was going to happen. Three straight boys, my senior brother, myself, and my junior brother, and a girl uh, was a baby in my mother's hand when my father died. Um, so the responsibility now is upon my mother to raise four kids. This is shortly before the Civil War. Um, we, we saw her you know, things you can consider really hard time. But I have a lot of respect for women, strong women, 
you know, women who really knew their God and really have relationship with God. My mother was a devoted woman and very, you know, passionate about God and, and about the things of God. She was a Catholic, but she worshipped God the best she knew. All her life dream is that one of her child would be a priest. Incidentally, my junior brother uh, rode into seminary school and was there for about 14 years uh, to be a priest. But before this time, I'm sorry to say, I've come in contact with the person of Jesus Christ in his resurrected power. I became a Christian at the age of 14 years plus. So um, I prayed my brother out of it. Uh, eventually, he got married and have four children today, you know, living a happy life, working for Koscharis. But the story, I don't want to jump, was rough and hard in the sense that um, my mother couldn't cope. Um, I, I, I started being a breadwinner before I turned seven. St my story is way out of this world. Absolutely incredible. And you can make a movie out of it and it will sell anywhere in the world. It's just that people don't appreciate things in this part of the world. Before I turned eight, I climbed pan tree <laughs> to, you know, charge three pence for cutting a pan um, uh, tongue down for women and to be able to address the, the tree, I charge six pence. Um, I do everything legitimate to earn a living. We, 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 we had rough time. It was hard on my mother to take care of four kids. The civil war has broke out, but we are living in the village. Uh, we went, oh. It's... Oh, the internet or phone call. Now, we live in the village. Um, we used to go and take kwashioko food, you know, so that kwashioko do not catch us, queue up on the line. We eat leaves of cassava, everything that have four legs for us, except automobile is eatable. Everything that fly for us is a, is a, is a, is a meat, okay? Uh, uh, sorry to say, for my audience, it may be embarrassing to you, but many of you are complaining about hardship in life. But you can only complain because you don't know what it is. If you knew, you wouldn't talk about it. I ate lizard. I ate rat. I ate everything to get protein. But my life is not defined by those things. My mother looked me straight in the face at that tender age of life and tell me to believe in myself and I should believe in God. And my mother convinced me that I'm a likable fellow and that people like me and that I will go places in the world. She was my angel. She, she, she spoke optimism into me and I believe that no door closes before me. My mother would fly Akara, get me to go and uh, grind beans before I go to school. The best I went in school something I'm not very proud of, but I'm not ashamed of it also, was third grade, what you call elementary three today. I've never been in anything called Four Corner World before that. I only try to educate myself by the things I do every day. The world in itself is a school. Everywhere you have been is a school. It's whether you are prepared to learn. You will learn something. You truly about things about life is that nobody will enter into a future the person do not create. So I have a mother who talks some common sense into me. So I live with optimism. I live with confidence. She will fly a color and keep one, one pound for me to go and sell and for my senior brother. I will sell two before my senior brother will sell one. So my mother discovered my entrepreneurial capability. 
part of the things he told me that people cannot say no to me. So I meet an elderly woman. I said, buy a color. The woman said, no, 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 no. Why? This is too early in the morning. I want to go. I hold her cloth. He said, is it by force? I said, my mother tell me nobody says no to me. She would just laugh and said, what a boy. How did you get, why did you get this confidence? You know, sometimes, you know, the way women indirectly will abuse his child and said, if this one is by me, she will not, he will not have sense. And she will uh. buy my car. So I will sell two trampan and then start, you know, running to school until uh, when I get to elementary three, my mother could not cope with the school fees of mine and my senior brother. So I had to go and live with my grandparents. So uh, he sent me to his father and his mother. So I lived with them. Um, when typically went to the bush, you know, try to help them with a uh, domestic work, you know, plant cassava, plant uh, yam, you know, do all of those things until my mother, junior brother, picked me up and brought me to Lagos at a tender age of seven years plus. I was under eight when I came to Lagos here. Our store is at 88 Griffith Street at a Butemeta, direct at the Yumbo bus stop. Okay. They used to uh, keep orange, you know, pond of orange opposite our shop. And my uncle lived with his uncle, his uh his, his grandmother, my, my grandmother's brother, called Frank, he was on working at Bozen at Ebutemeta. He's living in a Papa Road at 88 Griffith Street, living only in one bedroom with his wife and one of his child. So my uncle only keep his things there and sleep on the passage. So then where is my own bedroom? My uncle sleep in a passage and... I had to join him in the passage. So we wait for everybody to get to their room. This is our first me, first your house, before we lay our mat and lay down. By the time I'm getting to eight, he think I can manage to close the shop. He started keeping me in the store in a butemeta. There's no fan, no air conditioner, no restroom. <laughs> it's like incredible. It's like going to prison. <laughs> But that was a life of survival. Uh, the current chairman of Shisco also went through this kind of apprenticeship. We are all a uh, store boy. Early in the morning, before 5 a.m., we'll get out and get a bucket of water and shower by the roadside and then dress up and open the store by 6.30 in the morning. As we see some young boys dress up in a white shirt up and down going to school. Sometimes some of them put their heart over the mouth and laugh and say, <laughs> look at this rat shop. <laughs> they giggle, you know, pointing at me. And one day I keep my hand over my nose. I said, five years from today, I will employ you. I spoke to oh. one. That's correct. You know, I said that to one of them. So these are the kind of life I lived. And I worked for six and a half years without saddling. My uncle clothed me and fed me and never paid me a dime. By the end of the five years, before, before the end of this, what I did so well, he opened a branch in Joss and sent me to Joss to manage his branch in Joss. Our store in Joss was number four stroke five Dreamy Street, you know, in Plateau State. I did so well, he opened another branch in Sokoto and sent me to Sokoto. I managed his branch in Sokoto. From Sokoto, he recalled me back to Lagos and then opened another branch at Newe, his own town, and sent me to Newe. I have always, if I get the branch stabilized, then he gets somebody. I did all of this before I became 15. Wow. Yes. While I was at Newe, I was 14 years plus, and not something happened in my life. I came in contact with the person of Jesus Christ in his resurrected power. That's when I said I was born again. I became a Christian. I, that was when my life was revolutionized. I had a clear sense of purpose, who I am going to be and where I'm going to go in life. 
It's not a story. My grammar was terrible. Then I miss capital letter with, you know, small letter. If it's as bad as it is today, you can imagine what it was 40-something years ago. But I was able to script things down on a paper. What I want to do when I am 17, where I want to be by 19, what I want to do at 20, what I want to do at 22. These are not story. I place them on top of the wall of my bed before I go tonight at bed. I anoint my spirit with every one of them. By 17 years, my uncle gave me 200 naira in 1976. 1976. He gave me 200 naira. That is my steed worship for six and a half years. That was what I earned. But I have become a Christian by then. I went with my senior brother. My senior brother said, I should forget it. Let us go. I asked him, do you have anything to give me when we get home? He says, no. I said, okay. Why do I leave this one? Because children of these days are easy to neglect things. I have learned some basic principles from the word of God. And I simply said, in the book of Job, he said, do not forget your small beginning because you can start humble, but it will be great. My uncle was shocked when I looked him straight into the eyes and I said, I serve you well. I never stole from you. I knew what other young boys are doing. I never participated in any of those things. What happened was that my uncle was mad at me because before I turned 15, I have locked up his shop to go for camping fasting meeting. Before yes. I turned 15, I've gone to fast for three days without water, without food, staying for three consecutive days. Um, if you understand where I hail from, Igbo people especially from Newe, our store is our religion. If you have a deal with an Igbo man is not listening to you, close his shop. He will tell you, good boy, come, let us talk. Now, what is the problem? Ah, don't be that too hard. Let's, let's discuss this matter. As far as his shop is called, open, if you call him for, for seminar, he will not attend. If you call him for convention, he will not attend. If you tell him to come and vote, he's not going to vote. That shop is his church. Come first. That's the way we are friends. We don't play with our business. An Igbo man was at the bed, dying in the hospital. And three of his children went to see him. With his last breath, he mentioned their name. It's Okonkwa here. Yes, Okoli. He said, yes, Okafo. The man said, who did you leave the shop for? So, his death is not as important <laughs> as this. <laughs> I mean, I can wow. let the shop be open. So, we don't close shop for anything. So, I committed the taboo. You may not understand how serious it is that it was not a public holiday. I deprived this man of revenue for three days. He said, I have, be I have become a fanatic. And that he wants to settle me so that I can concentrate with this fanaticism. But I look him straight into his eyes. I said, you should be proud of me. I didn't go to nightclub. I was not free now. I went to church. I was praying for this business to be successful. He said, I should go and pray and do my own. He gave me 200 naira. I said, five years from today, I don't know what I had with five years. I said, if you had who I am, your head will be spinning. He shook him. And my uncle turned around and said, well, I know you will be successful. I said, thank you. That's all I needed from you. And I left and teamed up with my senior brother and we formed a company called Madoka Brothers. Mm. Um, he, he, my mother has supported him to get to elementary six, like junior high school or senior, whatever. But you know, I dropped out much earlier because I had no support. Um, but he did some apprentice, but not to my own age. 
the family tried to set him up. So he had much capital than myself. But we teamed up and worked together. I knew Lagos very well, so I had to come to Lagos, go to Leventis at uh, Butemeta, Leventis uh, Motors, where they are selling a Honda Pass, you know, bypass, enter night bus, go back to the east, sell it, and we were making some progress. Uh, it, it didn't take long. Within six months, we started differing in ideology. Uh, uh, part of the things that created problem between us was that I go to church, Pentecostal church, and when I'm going, I take one naira, and my senior brother quarreled me that I cannot take one naira to church. And that I said, why? He said in his Catholic church that 10 kobo is good for an offering or 20 kobo. I can't take one naira. I said, but Pius, you drink a bottle of beer. It costs us 50 kobo. I take Coca-Cola that is less than 10 kobo. So the money I give in the church compensates for the beer you drink. He said he doesn't like my logic. Let us separate. I didn't call for separation. He called for separation. And we parted when my capital was 316 naira. Um, another guy who, you know, we, one of the things that is good from those of us from the East is that our welfare system is that we help one another. We, is, you know, it's not a written welfare system. So you try to, so somebody gave me one quarter of a store and said I can keep my merchandise for six months. And then I parted with my brother and then started keeping things. They are coming to Leventis to buy something. Um, within six months, I had my first breakthrough. I went to Bulos uh, at uh, Orego, Bulos Enterprises that represents Suzuki. They had motorcycle crash bar. The things that protect you if you fall back on a motorbike. And nobody knew they had it. Uh, those days, there's no telephone. There's no email. So you need to work out to search and get information. But some of the things they don't teach us in school, but we learn from Street Smart, is that after buying the crash bar, I cut off the name of Bulos so that nobody knows where I'm getting the goods. And mm -hmm. take it in a night bus and run back to Newe. I sold it by about 200% because it was very scarce. Had enough money, I bought three cartons. Had enough money to buy another seven or eight cartons. I ran with night bus. I did this within one week. And I had about 3,800 naira. And then you can buy Peugeot then for 3,000, new brand Peugeot. And you can buy um, um, Mazda uh, panel van, 1,000. 500 naira. The hustle was 800 naira, not 1,000 naira. Naira used to be powerful. One naira was $2. Um, I then made so much money. I didn't want to buy a car, but I bought myself Honda 175. For me, it was like 7 Series BMW. <laughs> and uh, I really... The next wow. thing is that I rented room apart, furnish it. Before I turned 18, I was living in three bedroom apartment of my own with refrigerator, uh, with gas cooker, well furnished, and a foster chair. And I started thinking I'm going to settle down in life because I didn't want to fool around. One of those things I wrote down was that I want to marry before 20. Wow. One of the things I wrote down is that I want to have my own car before I turn 23, and that I want to be a millionaire by the time I'm 25. And to the fact, I was 19 years plus. I actually met charity when I was 18, and came from a middle class home, but we were nobody from where I came from, because his senior brother was a doctor, his uncle was a doctor, his father used to work for USC. So, you know, fairly middle class, average family. No, I'm not at the same league with her by any standard. And when I told my mother I saw a young lady that I want to settle down with, she was asking me, I told him the family said, I tried to put my hand where my coat to know there is. What is leading me that place? I should forget it, that we are not at any cardiacally. 
My mother didn't know the size of my faith. He was looking at the size of my capital. Even though my pocket may be empty, but my faith was full. There are many sharp young men who have a bigger pocket that we are competing. But I pray all of them out. I believe in power of prayer. I raised my hand in church. I just thought I claimed this lady in the name of Jesus Christ. And um, to the fact, I was to turn 20 on December 24, 19... Uh, I was... Uh, 1978. I took charity to altar on September 23rd, 1978. Three wow. months on 20 years, I wedded her. So I've been married for 42, uh, 41 years now. Okay? Wow. Yes. The first dream achieved. By 21, I ventured into importation, uh, made some mistakes. The second time, I got it right. I made some money. I was passing through Mandela's at Old Oka Road. I saw a Volkswagen Passat with 3,000 kilometers that has a, a dent in the bomber. I went to prize it, uh, and I got the car. And I chased the bomber when I was 22. So the second dream accomplished. I own a car before I turned 23. The third, wow. one of the dream actually was that I will have a child by 21. That did not happen. God planned it for me because I would have been a kid having another kid, you know. And my ambition was that by the time I am 40, you see. So you will also think we are colleagues today. You know, that, that's part of my dream. Uh, even his junior brother already having bar hair, but I'm still growing hair in my hair. The other thing that happened is that um, when I, about 23, one day I was traveling with my wife and my mother in the car, that same woman that inspired me to greatness. I tried to convince young boys, young men, to pursue their dream, believe in it, and work hard to achieve it. A lot of people think it's only dreaming about something. Uh, you can dream about something, but if you don't have plan for that dream, it's never the dream never going to happen by witchcraft. You need to plan how you are going to accomplish that dream. That's what vision is all about. I was in the car. My wife was in the front seat and my mother was at the back. When these things come on me, I speak like I speak to myself, like I'm a madman. I say, two more years, I'm going to be a millionaire. My mother said, hey, wait. I said, mama, what is the problem? He said, you boast too much. This is your boasting. Turn my stomach. Please, let's have peace on this journey. I said, Mom, I didn't insult you. What is the problem? He said, you don't, you don't know what 50,000 is all about. You are talking about a million. Please don't talk like that again while I'm in this car. I say, two more years, I will be a millionaire. My mother said, you said that again, I'll get out of God. I know she's a strong woman. I stopped the car and whine the back window down, get a little bit to her ear. Never for the fear of controversy deny your experience. A vision is like a man with a vision is close to a mad person. And there's mm. no one believer for every vision. It's not a group revelation. If God inspires something to you, when Isaiah said, Thus says the Lord, a virgin will conceive. That was when everybody disagreed with him. Because from the beginning of the creation at that time, they say he made the mistake. He didn't say a woman, he said a virgin. How can you be a virgin and conceive? You need your virginity. So it was a controversy. So I said close to my mother. I said, Mom, I'm sorry to tell you, two more years, 
I will be a millionaire. It was my fate. It's not her own. My mom, do you want to? I must say, yes, of course. I opened the door. She get down. I banged the door. My wife screamed at me. What am I doing? I said, do you want to get down with her? I drove off. I left my mother. When you have a true vision, you actually, you never believe your vision. You never believe it until you speak it. If everybody don't tell you you are crazy, then that vision is not from God. The first sign that your vision is correct is that nobody will believe you. Everybody will doubt you. Nobody gave me chance. People laughed at me, called me imbecile because I can't speak grammar. I can't even, I can't make one good sentence. I can't even write anywhere. But I have self-esteem. I believed in myself. I never looked down on myself. I have a sense of what. I believe everything I believe about myself and I work towards it. I learned to manage money. I am very disciplined in conserving money, you know, managing resources because it is not in plenty supply. So I can deploy them in a very intelligent way. I know how to wear one cloth for one year, wash it every time, just change the ties and all of those things. So these are the kind of life I live. And to the fact to eat, nobody will believe before I turn 25. I have about $2 million because one million, one million naira, one naira is $1.88. Less than 12 cents, you will get $2. My first trip to United States of America was in 1979 or 80. 1979, I went to American Embassy. Those are the time they gave us five, 10 years visa. They asked me, where are you going to go? I said, I'm going to America. I'm going on holiday. Do you have any money? I just carry a credit uh, traveler's check. I have $10,000. Bank it on the table. The man stamped me five years visa or 10 years visa instantly. When I get to America, everybody tried to convince me to stay back. Say, oh, you didn't go to school. You can go to school now. You can get credit to go to school. This is a place to stay with utmost respect. I asked the man, I said, I have a poor mother in the village. Why do you want me to settle down here? You enjoy life, have 24 hours power, okay? Uh, have a bottle of milk and orange juice in your refrigerator. If you make mistake to pay your bill, you'll be on the street. I'll go back to Nigeria. Let me suffer and see through to it. They didn't believe it. But on that trip, I left... Um, uh, I went to Washington first. From there, I flew to LA and then to Tokyo, to Taiwan, before coming back to Nigeria. Uh, and and you were just 25. Coming again? Yeah, you were about 25. At no, the time. I, I, I was 24 plus. I hadn't hit 25 by then. And you had $2 million in your account? I, I have $2 million before 25, yes. <laughs> have okay, sir. I my own end money before 25. And uh, I still drive Volkswagen Passat second hand. I didn't buy a new car. That's part of the discipline from the people of my own. I didn't bought, I never bought one property. I keep on putting the money back into my business because you grow capital. Part of the major problem young generation have today is they are in a hurry to reward themselves. They are in a hurry to, you know, you know, what you call gratification to show you have arrived. Right. I didn't take phone that is one twenty thousand or one fifty. Nobody, my lifestyle never changed. Nobody knew anything happened. Um, I lived like that. And um, so then you went to different countries at, on that trip. You went to Tokyo, you went to Taiwan. 
I went for business. I went to Tokyo to negotiate. You know, that's the first time I met the Japanese. The Japanese also played an important role in my life. I'll be very honest. When I met the Japanese, I learned their culture of respect and uh, value creation. Uh, integrity was one of the things I learned from the Japanese. And then I created a rapport with them at that entender age that they could trust me. I can't write my success story today without telling you what the Japanese did in my life. They are not, uh, they are not American. The, America is gasoline. They start very easy and easily press. Japanese is like a diesel engine, very hard to start. But when they start, they carry you through any mountain or hill. They can take you through with it. Okay? The man that met me first will meet me in a coffee shop. If the relationship goes well, after two years or three, they will invite you to the office. If you remain consistent, they invite you in the first floor of the office. If you remain consistent, the, the, man, the general manager will join the meeting. When the, the director join you for lunch or dinner. That is when they are already comfortable with you. Mm. I create a rapport that I started getting suppliers credit from the Japanese. That is one of the things that revolutionized cost charities. Rather than borrowing money from bank, interest rate is in your head, in your grandmother's head. They want everything to be able to get it. I started getting suppliers credit. And people were wondering, how did I get this money? But the truth is that people trusted me and like me, and provided me resources to do my business. I, I think I will stop so far, but this is a, a brief story about me and Kosharis. You can ask all your questions. The rest is history. We represent Rolls Royce in Nigeria. We represent BMW in Nigeria. We represent Jaguar Land Rover in Nigeria. We represent Mini in Nigeria. We represent Ford Motor Company in Nigeria. We are assembling Ford today. And recently, we have taken on Renault. So we have gone into agriculture in full backward integration. We plant rice. We mill rice. We sell rice. We have Kostaris Nigeria, PLC, Kostaris Moto PLC. We have Kostaris Ghana, Kostaris Côte d'Ivoire. We have uh, Kostaris Medical. We are into every sector of this economy. We are into a financial institution at a time one of the biggest children in this country, I own 25% of it. Wow. What I work at, yes. Wow. So that's wow. it. Okay, the internet is back. Yes, sir. Yes, I want us to take. I want to take you back to the Biafra War. You said yes. you you were young during the war, and you had to eat all kinds of garbage just to survive. Yep. So, what would you were there positive? What would you call the positive effect of a war? We all knew the negative. So, was there anything that inspired you from that war? or that inspired the Igbo race gen generally about the world? And is that why today every Igbo man wants to succeed, every Igbo man? Because they lost so much during the war. Um, to an extent from it, the real truth in life is that when you go through hardship, and if you have common sense, you learn through hardship. Bible recorded that Jesus learned obedience through the things they suffer. Okay? Anybody who never find it hard to earn 500 naira, if you, if, like my children, they, from the time they were born, they never beg for food. When we were, when we were growing up, we eat only the leg of a chicken. But we were begging them to eat the tile of a chicken and you know full chicken so the things we went through before the civil war an average Igbo man the way we are we are very independent and the 
Because we believe if you are not financial dependent, you are still a slave. So we want economic dependent. The first thing an Igbo man will ask you is, do you feed me? Do you feed me? In other words, he's not ready to beg you for food. And if he can feed himself, he believes he's a king in his own house. So this opened our mind to challenge status quo. We can take you on an argument and we, sub we submit to superior reason. We have an adage in Igbo land that said, when my mate is senior, is achieved more than me, I will respect him. In other words, nobody gives you chance and believe you can achieve better than him. So we believe in we are very competitive in nature. We 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 want everybody to work hard and we want to let the best excel, very independent from origin. That's why I compete with my senior brother, my sisters compete with me. We have open mind. Let the best excel. And if you are truly the best, you earn respect by the hard work you have. Nothing, nobody respects you by any other means but by what you are able to achieve. And that's why somebody like me, contrary to what many people think, that I'm not educated. <laughs> Sometimes I fool people and tell them I'm not educated and they believe it. But I am so proud in my level of education because Henry Ford said, who is an educated man? He said, an educated man is a man or a woman that can organize his or her thought into productivity. So, mm. I do tell people, if you don't like me, you cannot quarrel with my results. So, you can only make some uncomplimentary remark is too sharp, is too clever, but it stares you in your face. I went to Automobile Component University and I graduated with distinction. If you don't believe it, you cannot quarrel with the result. I did a research, not in a formal way, the way young boys do in university. I did a research when I was working for my uncle to know what is in Volkswagen that can fit in Peugeot, to know what is in Peugeot that can fit in Toyota. This is a, an informal research, but those knowledge I have is a power to make money. There is a guy by my store who went to university and his father gave him a lot of money. He put merchandise in his store, but he's selling those merchandise by their package, the way they were packeted. But he didn't know the content of what is in the packet. Sometimes a customer will get to his store to ask him for the same goods he kept in the store. He will say he doesn't have it. The person will come to my store. I tell him I have it. And it's not in my store. I will sell it three times the price of that guy. What do I do? I, the, after the guy pays, say, where is it? I say, just hold on. I'm bringing it for you. I'll leave my store. Take my right side. His store is by the left. When I get at a certain level, I send somebody to go to a store to get me front wheel bearing Volkswagen because I know it fits in Toyota. And when I get it, I will remove it from the pocket and give it to the customer so he doesn't know which part number that it is. He's arguing. I said, go and fix it. If it doesn't work, your money is guaranteed 100%. If you don't want it, take your money back. Go and fix your money in your car. This is a power of knowledge. Oh. It wasn't wrong because I was selling that guy's goose any more money than him. As I earn capital, I store my store. So when I have gained this knowledge and my store was getting up, his own start going down because now people will come to me. I will sell everything that he has and sell part of the ones he has that I doesn't have. So he's talking goose for me to sell. Because he's selling them by their number. Most of these components of parts are generic because the same guy that manufactured for Toyota, manufactured for Volkswagen, manufactured for Honda. So we 
we go beyond the part number Toyota put on it or Volkswagen and look at the component and tell you what it fits. That is the benefit of apprenticeship. If you don't go through apprenticeship, you will not learn this. That's why I said also, it's one of the best university any young man can attend. Uh, apprenticeship teaches you unprecedented discipline. Because there's no contractual agreement with your boss. You have to be at your best behavior. If you mess around, you are bundled back to the village and nobody will protest your case and nobody will come to argue about it because there's nothing written. You could have been in your four and a half years when you mess up, you are back to village. So you need to be at your best discipline. And that is why we've proven it statistically that any young man that successfully complete five, six, seven years apprenticeship, none of them has never been successful to the best of my knowledge because they learn the foundation of discipline that will carry them ultimately in life. Wow. Now, between political power and economic power, which do you think is superior? Um, in the context of Nigeria, to control the economic power. It, I don't it, think there is any part in Nigeria you will go and you will not find an Igbo man set up a shop. In the context of Nigeria, political power comes first. But I believe economic power is more important in a very civil society. You you don't know how America value any member of Ford family. They travel on a diplomatic... In fact, the U.S. government, the way you treat president, has to approve for any member of Ford family to come to this part of the world. So, because of the economic power they provide to that country. But on the other hand, we have a society where people who never did any job control cash better than those and some people tell you power is greater than money because political power can destroy your business overnight. That is temporal. When we mature and get to a civil society, the world will be, you will begin to appreciate economic power. Any man that is not economically dependent is still a slave. He's still a servant to an extent. And uh, can... that reminds... yeah, go on, sir. Please go on, sir. Yeah. So it, the person cannot talk freely. He cannot express himself. So you are already intimidated, you know, because you are going to say things to please your master to give you money for the next food and all of that. And so you are micromanaged. You can never fully actualize yourself, you know. You, so that's the difference. So I believe that I would rather have economic power, okay, than political power. Because political power is four years, eight years. You can get out of power and you become an ordinary man. But I have a dress. If I never controvert any law, I am consistent. You can always find me. I don't change my phone. The first phone I subscribe since Airtel, I have. Many people change phone after election. Each election, they change phone because, you know... <laughs> So you, you won't get them again. You need to see them. So why do I need to change my phone? I want my customer to see me. If, you, if I have to live another 50 years, you'll get me in the same number that you know me. So that is independence of economical power. When you have it, you are free. You are not hiding anywhere for anybody to look for you. Wow. Well, I was going to tell a joke. Uh, that uh, Chief Abiola once told us, MK Abiola, when he met his friends who went into sugar business. And he, and he, he told the man, Stanley, Stanley, it seems this your sugar is very sweet. And the man replied, that money is sweeter than sugar. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know about that because you can <laughs> money. The only thing is that money gives you confidence. Also, um, um, that is true. Um, uh, if you also want to believe it, 
even the Bible says money answereth all things. So, um, 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 unfortunately, it ought not to be so. But in Nigeria, when money speak, truth keeps silent. You know, so uh, so it's become the other way around. It shouldn't be so. Um, we need to still appreciate intellectual power and capacity. That's also the 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 greatest weakness from people on my own side. Some of them make some money to buy a Mercedes and think what they have in their pocket is more important than what somebody has up here in the brain. The only difference I can tell you is that making money is also an act of leadership. When you are born leader or you have an attitude of a, a leader, you look at adversity will not be anything to you because you will understand that they are just a refining fire that will burn out impurities in your life. What makes a lion what it is is the confidence the lion had. When a lion meets elephant that is eight, eight times bigger and stronger than lion, 65, 80% more intelligent than the lion. The first thing that comes in the mind of lion is this is a lunch if it's in the afternoon or this is a dinner if it's in the night. The first thing that comes to elephant head is that this is a eater. So your mindset and your way you think is what reduces the elephant to like a, a, like a sheep. Is size notwithstanding. So when I talk to young people, I tell them you require three things to survive in life. One is a vision. To have a clear sense of direction where you want to be in life. It's like a journey of a voyage. You may not know all the routes that will take you there, but the destination will be very clear in your mind. Like Joseph saw himself as a prime minister in Egypt. But God never revealed to him that he's going to get into a pit and uh, poo poo in the pit and sleep in the pit. If God showed him all the journey, he may say, let me remain where I am. But when you see the end, there's a driving force in you that carrying you there. The second thing is faith to believe in your vision. That when it gets so dark, Regardless of how dark it is, you still believe I'm going somewhere and nobody can talk you out of it. Then the third thing you require is courage. Courage is not an absence of fear. Courage is ability to act in the face of danger. A leader must never express and show his fear, no matter how scared he is. So that sense of optimism, that's why one of the U.S. president, Thomas Jefferson, said nothing in the face of this earth will help a man or a woman with the wrong mental attitude. And nothing can stop a man or a woman with the right mental attitude. Um, a man we consider a prophet of God to this entire generation called William Braham said it 54 times in his message that the right mental attitude towards every promised word of God will bring it to come to pass. So, everything starts from the way we think. Many people see hills in their mind, in their life and magnify that hill to become a mountain, insurmountable. No one person has it all. You have to measure on what is going right in your life not measuring on what is going wrong in your life. Because the person that is tall is not short at the same time. The person that is fair is not dark at the same time. We all lack something. Is that sense of what? That I am not an accident on the earth. I am born for a purpose. There's something God sent me here to do that will help you start looking for where you fit. And when you deliver value to people,
they will pay you for it and money will follow you. Unfortunately, people are pursuing money and money is running away from them. But if they have a sense of creating value, money will pursue you. It's a game. It's a table. And everybody that makes it play by the same rule. Okay? It's like a tennis game. You win when you serve. If you lost your five services, you become poor. You lost the game. So, when you have opportunity to serve, serve better than any other person. You win a point in service. But some people, and if your opponent didn't serve well, you take his own service. You continue to increase in your opportunity of earning. So, everybody that has made it in life is somebody who has a sense of service and purpose. If you do that, you will never be poor. Money will follow you. If you are a barber, bab hair better than any other person. When you finish babbing it, give the person a massage in his hair. He will tell his brother, this is the place to bab hair. Before you know it, people will be queuing. And you'll be wondering, there are other babas here. Why is people queuing up to bab in your shop? It's the service you give, not Babalawo you meet. People who doesn't know it, go to Babalawo. Those who know it, give service and money follow them. Wow. What do you think is responsible for the insulation of the Igbo people? Uh, one of the allegations against Igbos is that they prefer to have their brothers anywhere you find an Igbo. You must find a cluster of Igbos. What do you think is responsible? Well, um, I totally will not agree that that is the uh, peculiar to Igbo people. Um, but um, one thing I can say that is peculiar to Igbo people is that we have a welfare system. We believe to distribute wealth so that your brother don't come to beg you because we hate begging. Begging is not, a banishe is not the best profession. We don't really take it as a virtue that you are asking people to help you to do something. So, we will either try to establish you, uh, teach you the way to go and catch fish so that you don't disturb him anymore and things like that. That's the thing that is unique. Because I'm an Igbo man. Josiah Samuel, my <laughs> second in command, is from Ogbomocho. So people, I have people from Ghana working for me. I'm, I'm not particular. I'm looking for the best brand. So people, some people say he make medicine to block my eye. I told them to go to the same Babala who make their own medicine. Because the medicine he made to me is that he learned that service better than them. So you can't talk him out of me. When a man gives you value, you will never despise it. So I am very objective. So the, there are things, if, if you are my son, if you can't create value for me, I give you capital to go and do your own business. So I, I hold everybody accountable. So we have that independent mind. So even when we are doing business with our brother, we challenge each other to get the best out of us. So it's not that inclination that we keep our people around us. The Indians do that. Uh, uh, different people do that. But our uniqueness is that we want everybody to stand on his own fitting, not to depend on me. Like I call you people in the evening and give every one of you food so that you can help me. We we don't respect a man who does things like that. Why do you need to give me food every day? Establish me so I don't come to you for, for food every day. Teach me, show me the way to go. That's why you won't believe when I started going to Japan or Taiwan, we are competitors. Six of us, Igbo people, will sleep in one room. And we are hiding what we are doing from one another. When I collect my invoice, I will keep it and put my head on it. When you shake my head, I'll wake up and grab your hand. Because I don't want you to know what I have ordered. But we will share room. So, you see our competitive spirit. We, we come together, but we still compete in a, way, a future way of competition, but keep our secret independently from one another. 
Wow, fantastic. Okay, now I want us to go into the nitty-gritty of your business trajectory. Uh, why did you move from merchandising to automobile? What, what influenced you into going to automobile? Let me simply put it like this. Success, when ignite, is run faster than the widest fire you can ever think about. If you get it right, that's why I tell people, don't be ma jack of all trade and master of none. Do one thing and do it well. When you mm. do one thing and do it better than any other person, you will write your success story from that one thing you are doing. When you see people today, uh, he's, uh, he's doing rice, he's doing sugar, he's doing this. You tear yourself apart. Take one aspect of business, do it better than any other person. Dominate it. Your reputation in that opens so many other doors for you. Um, the BMW business, the person that introduced me to BMW was my late friend, Willie Anumudu, brought Dr. Ime mm. to my house when I was living in Bishland Estate. They have formed a company called Ultimate Moto, and they wanted me to invest into that company. When you need one million naira to get Merchant Bank import license, I invested one million naira in Ultimate Moto. But unfortunately, I went into business with some politician and I lost the money without anything back. So when BMW asked again that I should join some other people, I said, sorry, I don't do partnership. Allow me to run this business in my own way, but give me five years and assess me on what I'm going to do. If you decide, don't even give me a contract, but test me for five years and see what I'm able to do. But this, you know, um, <laughs> joining together with people that you don't share the same value, that have some other thing that motivate them, sorry, I will not do it anymore. I did BMW so well. When BMW took over uh, Land Rover, they appointed me a dealer because of the result they saw. And also, I became a dealer of Lova. The day we were to launch Lova in Nigeria, we already put the car down, cover it, invited guests, and the news broke that BMW sold Lova and the Land Rover to Ford. We closed the car. We never launched it again that day because we couldn't put it behind them. When Ford took over Land Rover and saw how well we manage Land Rover. They appointed us dealer for Ford. <clears throat> Ford eventually sold Land Rover to Tata Motor Company. And Tata saw how well we manage Jaguar Land Rover because they bought Land Rover and uh, Jaguar. They gave us the dealership of Jaguar. So when you do one thing well, it ignites to the other. Um, the Japanese don't appoint one person a dealer for a competing brand. Many people actually don't know Koschari's business. They thought our business is automobile. It's not correct. The truth is anybody that drives car in Nigeria is my customer. Regardless of the car you drive, there's no car that moves on the road. There's no component I'm selling that is inside. You are using one of my products. If you are not using our paint, you are using our masking tape. There's something I'm selling that is moving in your car, regardless of the brand you drive. So we are having a business that is pharmaceutical of automobile, just like a human being. Within six months, you must take an adjustic, Panadol or Fancida or whatever. You are driving car. You are my customer. I like to see cars on the road. When cars are not road, I'm not happy. When cars are driving, jumping inside, gallop, into potholes and whatever, I am happy because they will come back to come and reconcile with me later on. So I keep wow. cars on the road. 
we are the doctors of automobile. Okay, so uh, can we talk about how you have progressed from the beginning to now? Can you just talk to us about your, your peculiar or unique business model that has helped you to expand so much that now everybody is using your products? Number one is to know your limitations. I couldn't grow Kosharis to what it is if I have not accepted my limitations. I have money. I could have acted like every other Igbo trader, stay under a warehouse and uh, buy Mercedes and have a driver and get apprentice. The, what happened was that the system that made me, I challenged it. That system that made me is good, but it has fault. The fault is that you micromanage the people. You don't allow the people to get the best out of them. When you take a young man, you teach him all the secrets of business, you know, train him. When that guy got to a level where he can add value, you give him capital and send him away. While he's working for you, if you import goods, you cut the letter head out so that he doesn't know who shipped the goods. You cut the price out so that he doesn't know how much you get the goods. You only tell him uh, this thing is sell at uh, 50 naira or 5,000 naira. He doesn't know whether you are making 40% or 20% or 10%. So you completely kill initiative. So if you are making 40%, customer could have offered him to buy the goods where 45% margin is on it, he will say no. Or God say, is this price? And that is final. That is the greatest fault of that. More, another pinfall is that some of my people lack trust. You are afraid somebody is going to steal from you. Therefore, you don't want to expose yourself. It's not like we are preaching to you can't make a mirror without breaking an egg. You must be willing to give people your trust. Let people know you trust them and then hold them accountable to reciprocate that trust that you've given them. People like me, when people trust me, they put me in prison. If, you, if I get to know you don't trust me, I don't owe you anything. There's no reason for me to live up to you. But if I know you trust me, I will be a dead man to betray the trust. So that's one of my secrets, that I trust my employees and I let them know I trust them. I hold them accountable to reciprocate the trust that I give to them. I let them know this is a responsibility and you must live through to it. So, um, that's where many of my people want to do everything. But when, after I served my boss, I took apprentice boys, the first boys that worked for me, five of them. Each of them, I settled at their fifth year. I replaced them with employee. And my idea is that we are going to bake a big cake where anybody can take a pile out of it. I started hiring people who are more sensible than me. But these people are technocrats. They, they avoid risk. They are very skillful. But they, are, they don't have the courage that I have. What do I brought to the table? My core, compon my core competent of automobile component. And I sell my visions to them and try to make a believer out of them to follow in the things that I was saying. That's why people who have PhD are working for me, people who have master degree with my elementary three degree, and then and we are still building an institution. That's how they tell they told me what to do, how to structure the campaign to compete in a in a structured manner where banks can take us serious, where suppliers can take us straight. And we started putting systems and processes in our business. But some of my brothers will tell you, I don't want anybody here to speak grammar. 
and then all you get is people who carry your briefcase. If you shit, they put cap on it and say, hey, this is the way big man shit has to be. So everybody follow you. But I got people who challenge my assumptions and I reason with them. I don't agree with them in everything. They bring intellectual capacity in the, in the business. and street smart. We come to a compromise. That is the secret. We look for entrepreneur to work for us. In Costa Rica, we teach entrepreneur. We, are, we educate people to be entrepreneur. If we hire you and we see you have a civil service mentality, all you want to do is to avoid blame. You don't want to make mistakes. We see that the job is so interested. Within two years, we let you go because you can never be useful to yourself or be useful to us. So we want people who want to, you know, we guide people, you know, by helping them to express themselves. When you give a man a responsibility with authority, he can make mistakes, but don't make one mistake two times. You can ask a dumb question, but don't take dumb action. We will accept you and we will live with your mistake because no child grew without falling. It's in the process of rising and falling that your leg becomes strong. So I knew these principles of life and I applied them in my business and that's how we create the institution that people know as Kosharis today. Fantastic. Now, everyone knows that you cannot do mega business without taking loans. And loans in Nigeria can be very deadly. So how have you been able to uh, obtain loans and service your loans? Thank without... you. Thank you, Dele. I borrowed, okay. I borrowed my first 1,000 Naira from African Continental Bank. The manager of the branch was one late Mr. Dulu, and they told me about turnover. <laughs> I took the 1,000 Naira, went to my store that day. Before the night, I went to pay 250 Naira. The following day, I paid 375 Naira. The following day, I paid three. I haven't done anything with it because I was doing turnover. <laughs> By fourth month or six, bank was taking money out of it. That money remains 750 Naira. I put my two hands on my head. I said, Jay, <laughs> is this what bank loan was all about? I went and paid that money back and I started working out to build my own capital. Many people will not believe it, but on my honor, I never borrow from bank until we built the Kosharis Plaza that is in Adiola, Odeku, and the Akadenshala, uh, that property. We, we never borrow from bank until we bought that property and built it. We work with our internal generated revenue. The only thing is that I deprived myself. I defer my gratification. I was not in a hurry to show that I have arrived. That's the problem with most of our people. We are very loquacious people. We want to show we have arrived throwing money around. So that was what happened. I kept an ego eye on capital, knowing that capital is not in plenty supply. It's a resources that you need to manage and guide with a, a very good eye. So we, 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 before I started hiring workers, I, I put myself on that strict position. If I enter a transport, I wrote down how much I spent to enter a bus. So I am able to know how much I made every day, how much I made every month to decide what salary I put myself into and be able to invest my money back into my business. Capital doesn't fall from heaven. If you are an entrepreneur, you create capital. What you do with the little you have will give us sense that you, you are a true entrepreneur. And today, we borrow in banks on a negative pledge. We didn't pick it on the street. It's a discipline that we show in resource management. And the bank, over 40 something years, prove us that we are credible. And when we make a promise,
it's back. Sorry, the internet was acting up. Oh, okay. okay. Yes, sir. It's, we're back now. Okay. Yes, please go on, sir. Or are no, you I, done with that? That you need to um, manage resources very well. Um, so these are some of the things we did to build a capital. Um, people sometimes have 20% capital and want to borrow 80% from bank, you are already committing suicide because you can only leverage on a borrowed money. If you want to borrow money, the money you borrow should not be more than 10-15% of the money you have to do the project so that you can discount it if you have any accident. But when you are highly geared by leveraging so much in borrow, interest rate will put you in a pit that nobody will bring you out. You will lose the 20% capital you have in servicing debt, and you won't have nothing. So you are better off even having that 20%. And even the Bible said that a, 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 a borrower is a slave to the lender. The man that lends you money is, is your master, and he dictates all the terms to you. So you need to borrow where you have capacity to negotiate the rate. And you can also bluff the person lending you money to say, sorry, I don't need your money. i write him one check and return all his money. Then he will call you back and start talking to you seriously because you have shown capacity that you have what it takes for him to trust you. It's natural. Those who doesn't have, the little they have is taken away from them. And those who have more is given to them to manage. Success is about management. Anything you cannot manage, you lose. If you don't manage your health, you lose it. If you don't manage your spouse, you, 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 you lose your wife or your husband. So you need to manage everything in life. God created a man to be a manager for those who are Christians. If you, many people read Genesis 1. Genesis 1 is a summary of God's creation. If you like, go and read Genesis 2. When God created everything, nothing Nothing is beautiful on the earth. It never rained until God created a man. Because God was waiting for a manager to manage the resources. And when he created the man, the first thing he told the man is to walk. He put him in the Garden of Eden to address it. That means he provided him a job. And when the man did well walking, and God get the animal and say, okay, I want you to express your intellectualism. Give them name. He started naming them. When man did do well with that, it's okay, this is the time for you to take a wife. But the young generation want a wife before work. When we talk about productivity, we think that producing is burning more children in Africa. But a white man make a microphone, make a, a telephone, call it Samsung. These are their brainchild. They are giving birth to children by their brain. We also want to multiply number of children and say that God say multiply and replenish the earth. Any idiot can do that kind of multiplication. You don't need to have a PhD to be able to, to do that. So what God is telling us is exercise what I put in you. You are a hard disk that is loaded from creation. I put something in you. Bring it out. B is a command on a potential. There's something in you that I want you to express. So when we get to those basics and understand it, then you, you feel fulfilled. Many people go to job and think that is their work. Your job is not your work. You, your job is what you are paid for. Your work is what you are born to do. When you find your gift and deploy it, then you find your work. Before then, you are going to a job and people will only dictate what you want. But when you deploy yourself, in your gift, then no man can pay you for who you are because you become the person you are. You dictate your own value. Okay, still on the issue of loans. Uh, you are an international player. I live partly in England and I know that it is possible for me to change my car or my wife's car every year because I can go to Jaguar and it's something I've done in the past. Sure. Buy a car get a car loan, I pay a deposit, get a car loan. Next year, I can bring the same car, drop it, 
pick a newer version, add a bit money as long as you are. What is the problem that we cannot have car loans in Nigeria? I'm sure a lot of people are, are dreaming of buying your cars, but okay. it is cash and carry most of the time. So do you have facilities for duly employed people for them to be able to live some life of luxury? Those things we express in England is one of the things that fuel the economy because money is changed hand. It's not trapped in one place, okay? Um, but it's a function of so many things. There's a stability in exchange rate. There's a stability in law and order. When you know dealing without words, if you don't pay your obligation, your car will be repossessed. And nobody is going to get injunction in court to stop the repossession. <laughs> Give somebody a car here and want to repossess it. He will get 10 years injunction. And by the time you get to get the car. So we need, we need to restructure the whole system. Okay. Yeah. When we do all the work, then we will be able to develop middle class. Then you will see our economy start booming. And people cannot understand that we are 200 million poor people because there's no middle class. We only have rich people and poor people. There's no in-between. And the, what drives the economy is that middle class. And credit has to be in place to be able to drive that. But so when we say we need to restructure the system, and people are saying we don't restructure anything, those people are the greatest enemy of this country. We will restructure our judiciary. We will restructure our political system. We will restructure everything so that you can seek redress. There's no business that thrives without credit. But credit is not a dutch. Credit is because you can pay and the man will know you will pay. Then he will give you credit. Stephen Bank today cannot do microfinancing, loaning money because they keep on chasing people around who will take the money and get away and the system will support them. There's no way to track them down. You can get, yeah. you can give somebody a loan here, and the person will get a injunction for you not to harass him, and court will grant it in Nigeria. So how do you get your money back? So we need to work to restructure the system completely. If you take a case to court in England, we we do this six months. You you discharge that case. In fact, three months, you get the result. I've had a case where somebody is cheating me and was infringing on my brand. And the case has been in court since 2011. And I've got nowhere with it. It's not even being had. So, what kind of justice do you get at the end of the day? So, we, we, we need to, you know, overhaul the whole thing for the good of all of us. Because at the end of the day, we will all benefit. If this economy starts bubbling, it will be for the interest of every one of us. We will remain, when we have less poor people, we will reduce thief. We will reduce kidnapping. We will reduce 419. You can't educate a man and don't give him a means of livelihood. He will use that head for negative, negativity. It's even better you don't educate him because you are punishing him. He has already no value for life and you make him live like a gutter boy after he has gone to university. Wow. Okay, now let's go into your foray into agriculture. Could you tell us about your business in agriculture? Our business in agriculture is that um, it wasn't an accident. If you listen to 
some of the people who go into rice production, they are people who have been importing rice, uh, telling government, if you give me this incentive, we will do this, we do this. We never imported one grain of rice. But never in our life. But um, 35 years ago, I started to acquire a piece of property in Anambra State. I bought some of them from Rojeni in Oba. Bought some from uh, uh, Bravo. Bought some from Live Brewell until I got in one place about 3,000 hectares of land. And they, I've always known I'm going to go into agriculture. But about eight years ago, we acquired a company, a Swiss company that is here that has been 65 years called Sinjeta, which is uh, uh, an agricultural business. Sinjeta is a seed provider. It's quoted in New York Stock Exchange. So Koscharis took over their Nigerian business and their XYZ managing director is still working with us till today. So this company was the company we used to develop our agricultural business. They went to make a test in the land and told us it can grow rice. I've always planned that I'm going to retire into agriculture. And uh, uh, I plan I will do this by the time I am 65 or 70, I have carried container all my life, stay under a concrete building wall. I want to get close to nature, you know, have fresh air and work in the field. So it's a long lifetime dream. And this company, you know, made the data and tell us what to do. So since 2015, we went into um, a value, uh, uh, you know, backward integration agriculture by planting lies, uh, provided irrigation today. So we are doing two crop season, mastering it, we're going to three crop season. We are milling our rice. Uh, today, we cannot produce enough rice to say to Nigerians and people pay money and wait. Yes, we, this is the best business we have because we don't do credit. Everything is cash. Cash in advance, yeah. not cash delivery. So, and uh, the World Bank, uh, the World, the, yeah, the World, the World Bank has said by 2050, Nigeria will be by demography one of the third largest population in the world. We will be between 350 and 500 million people. Food will be a king in the future in Nigeria. Those who go into agriculture today are people who is going to control this economy. Currently, Nigeria spends about $3.5 billion to import rice every year. This is not uh, spacecraft. This is food. It got to a point that banana we eat in Nigeria is coming from Cameroon. You just ask, do we have people here with sense? Do we have entrepreneurs in this country? So we have positioning ourselves to target 35% of this 3.5 billion business. And that's what we are doing. We are going to be building the second mill very soon. So we are for real in our rice business. And it may, take, it may eventually be our core business. Because today, our automobile business has gone down because of the economy and the exchange rate. So the, that's why it's good to diversify when you have the capital to do so. So you can have some support base that will carry your business. During the COVID whatever, our our rice business is the best business ever. We were allowed to go to farm. We are allowed to sell. Right? People need to eat food. It's our business that was not shut down. So our rice farm and business never closed for one day. And we were donating rice and milling rice and selling rice. So um, it's one of, the, one of the best business I've ever ventured into. Wow. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, you said you're also into the world of finance. Uh, could you also talk to us about that? Um, you said you... Uh, well, I used to own Costaris Finance and Investment Limited, you know, 100%. I, we invested money in two public-quoted banks in Nigeria. At that time, I was sitting in two public-quoted banks. 
you know, and um, serve in one of them as the chairman of credit committee for 12 years before I retire. So, you know, uh, the mechanics of business is the knowledge you have in it. The dynamics of that business is the capital you put into it. Mechanics without dynamics is no good. Neither dynamics without mechanics. But when you get two of them together, you will get things in motion. So uh, that's what we have been able to achieve to a great extent, you know. Uh, by the grace of God, God has been faithful to us and we have managed resources very well. So um, those institutions are still there uh, running. I sold out in one of them and cash out and uh, invested into some other good institution in Nigeria that uh, paid off. So we are, we are very liquid in our business and our creditors all knew that and we enjoy their confidence, you know, but they, you never have enough capital in business because, like I said, people throw new business at you. I just came back from a, a Cross Liver uh, two days ago. Uh, many people don't believe the gentleman in Cross Liver that says he's building a super highway that will connect uh, Calab Cross Liver State to the northern part of Nigeria under two hours. That road, 90 kilometers of them is done. I'm deciding to invest on 50 kilometers on it where we will build our own toll and collect our own revenue, you know, and, you know, maybe take it to about 100 kilometers. So there are opportunities. There's opportunity to invest into hospitals. So we get to a friendly state who provide you opportunity. Nigeria is still the best place to do business because when you go to Ghana, you go to Cote d'Ivoire, you go to... Africa's this economy is like less than Lagos State a budget in a year. So this is the place to be. So this place provides opportunity. You know, any friendly state, you know, who is ready to provide us a good land, we will go there and farm rice. We will employ their citizens and we'll put a mill in that place. You know, we've we we gone through it, we understood it today uh, with irrigation. You can rice is a wheat that grow on a mud. You know, if you have water, four months you do your harvest. So you can do three crop season in a year. And, and this country will be self-sufficient very soon with rice and even export rice. You know, people are clamoring of the price today. I tell them, be patient. We bought SIM card, 200000 Today it's giving out free of charge. It's about supply and demand. With the kind of money people are making in rice, there's going to be more entrepreneurs getting into that business to cash out on it. There will be oversupply and price will crash. Rice will, Nigeria will export rice in, in no distance period in the year. And it could then go to people say cement was too expensive. Is it not exporting cement today? It's producing cement in all, all our African states today. Nigeria will play that role in other African economy very soon. Hmm. Now, would you ever go and PLC? If you never give this current administration one credit, give them credit, they are serious about agriculture to get Nigeria produce the food they eat. Okay, sir. Yeah. Yes. Would you ever go PLC? Um, because Charis Moto is already PLC, but we have not we are not quoted yet in Nigeria Stock Exchange. But we are preparing ourselves there. It's called Charis Moto PLC. We have uh, so many shareholders today that we are already public quoted. Uh, we are already public company, but we are not quoted in Nigerian stock exchange. Okay, so let's talk about the deals that burnt your fingers. Yep. <laughs> well, um, it can't be rosy, rosy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can you can never um how do i sweet say it you can never swim without water you know you know drenching your body so it goes with it um it's those things that makes us tough uh but you pay some school fees in a school of life so many times you think you have graduated but the school of life has a way to write you a new subject when you think you have graduated. 
and you start studying it. So we have met things in life that we never believed or thought was possible. But those are experiences that makes us tough. Sometimes people say we are very difficult. No, we've learned in a very hard way. It's like a young man who has capital that do not have experience. He will lose the capital to gain the experience. And in business terminology, we will say he learn in a hard way. So his school fees for learning is much more expensive than people who take time to build it. There are many deals that we burn our finger. I mentioned one already. I mentioned to you the investment I made in Ultimate, uh, Ultimate Moto. I lost the total capital. It wasn't a small money. It's a money you need to, re to start a merchant bank then that later the capital from 1 million neither become 12 million or become whatever it became later. And uh, to come with that amount of money was not easy. But, you know, those are the things where we learn experience that make us, when we want to do the investment again, we do them in a better way. There are so many things I, I burned my finger, tried to get into oil businesses, lost hundreds of, lost tens of billions of Naira in all of those things. But they're all school of life. So you need to learn to be able to be more careful. Today, um, we want to focus in the business that we have tested, that we have known. We are not in a hurry anymore. We have, we have a lot of solid business. If I have opportunity today, I will put rice mill in every state of this country. There's no need for me to look for uh, oil that is in the ground that I may spend all my money trading. I will not find. I do everything today legitimately to earn money. My wife will invite you soon to come for to come and see her little uh, supermarket where he sells healthcare product, Eden Organic Farm. Okay, uh, today we do bottled water, including sachet water. I'm involved in it. I do yogurt. I'm into hospital uh, equipment, Costaris Medical, CG Biostat. I'm into car leasing. We have Costaris Mobility. You know, most of the big multinational, we lease them car. You know, some of them have two, three hundred of our vehicles. So we lease trucks to big company. You know, manage them. You don't have to tie so much money into asset. You just pay per month what you have to do. We are well diversified uh, institution. So we are into different things today that uh, create us well. So we are not looking for new business. So those who are listening to you should not be introducing business to us that they never did. So if they have money, they should bring it and manage it better for them. Before, after you leave, they start throwing proposal on to me. We've had enough business that require capital that we have not have to be able to do them. Now let's talk about my very dear sister, Charity. Yep. You were discouraged from marrying her. So I, I is it today. I can see that she, she has so much responsibilities in the group. So could you tell us how it has been? Well, God blesses me. Um, if you're a Christian and you read the Bible, it will tell you you can have a tongue to speak like angel. You can have faith to move mountains. You can you know, do all kind of sauce, but if you don't have charity, it will profit you nothing. <laughs> so God bless me with charity in the spiritual and bless me with charity in the natural. That's why I love that name so much that I also gave my daughter charity. So I have two charity in my home, my wife and my, my only girl. Both of them are charity. Um, that lady was God's gift to my life. That is the truth. Um, she did me a favor to marry me. His parents thought she was out of her mind when she decided to stick with me. I was driving a motorbike. Uh, her mother saw me in the market and came home telling them the story about this crazy boy standing on top of a bike and leaving his hand. You know, he hoped how her mother would be sleeping. Never knew that this crazy boy would become his in-law one day. And uh, uh, when we were under 20, we both met in church and she decided to give me her right hand of fellowship 
when I really want nothing. So, um, um, she earned a lot of my respect. She's the vice president of the Koscharis, and I will tell you basically, both of us built Koscharis because she was my first employee. She used to stay in the store. God did it that in our first six years, we didn't have children. So she ran the business with me from Grand Zero to become what we have become. So we own the company together. If I'm not there today, she seamlessly fit into my shoe and run the business. Uh, uh, I, she's, she's there to me. God blesses me with, uh, with uh, two women in my life, my mother and my wife. And uh, I have a lot of respect for serious-minded women because they, they can help you. God sent a woman in a man's life to help the man actualize his vision. Some women try to focus to uh, compete with their husband by saying, I'm going to run my own business. I'm going to be a woman of myself. A woman is fulfilled when he help the man to do something. That's why God said, I will give you a help meet. It's not a help meet. It's not M-E-E-T, -E but M-E-A-T. So a help meet, a helper that is worthy. But the unfortunate thing is, if a woman shows up in a man's life and the man had no plan for his life, then the woman is also confused because the woman come to help you to do something. And when he showed up in your life, he find that you are doing nothing and you don't have a place to go. So there are two confused people in the home. But God was kind to me that I have plan and where to go. She sent this lady in my life to help me accomplish what I wanted to do. And wow. she's the back of Charis organization. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, before I take the last two questions, we've almost done two hours. You won't believe it, Chairman. Almost two hours. Uh, I would like to acknowledge that the special advisor to the President on Political Affairs, Senator Babafemi Ujudu, who was my uh, colleague at the Concord newspaper, has been watching and listening quietly uh, from Facebook. Uh, so, Senator Judo, good evening. I just must uh, recognize his presence. Uh, okay, now, you preach on the streets. Yes. And I once put a, a video that went viral. That's right. You, respond to you, you tweeted. Multi like you on the streets. Are you not afraid? Um, well, Dele, we have only one life to live. One, many of us live life that is, um, many of us live in a prison of fear. And that is one of the reasons why you never achieve, they never achieve anything in life. Um, if you know, knew, I still drive a motorbike today in Lagos, not a car that carry me, I drive myself and I go to work with it. The only thing is that you may not know it's me because I put my gear. I have three bikes that I still drive today. My belief is that nobody can take my life until God finishes with me. <clears throat> if God never finished with me, and I am, <clears throat> if God has finished with me, I am afraid of air crash. I will live in my house in Ikoyi here where I am living and plane will crash on top of my house and I will die of air crash. Whether I am flying it or the plane, come, there are people who never flew in their life and plane crash on top of their house. Only person who has right to take life is God. Nobody will kill me until God finishes with me. That's part of my confidence I am not afraid. Fear. I make fear, fear. Fear is afraid of me. So that thing doesn't cross my mind. And I know I'm going to die once. Many people only think about death and how long they live in life. Life is not measured by duration. Life is measured by donation. 
there is a gift God gives you to your generation. Do your generation feel you? The oldest man that lived in the Bible is called Methuselah. Only one verse is written about him. He lived 996, 965 years and died. No other thing was said about Methuselah. Jesus died at 33. We will never talk, stop talking about him. Please, take all the apostles of Jesus Christ. Peter was beheaded. Paul, James, none of them lived 70 years. All this new model idea, you must live 70. If you don't live 70, you didn't reach God's generation. What is important is, did your generation miss you? Did you deliver the, the number one thing that has acquired the wealth and the world is grave. Well, people with five billion cells in their brain went to grave without producing anything to their own generation. That person has lived a wasted life. You must live for your generation to remember you. We will say Dele introduced Ovation. He was the number one man that introduced a magazine that everybody copied in his own time. You, there are everyone, no human being is born without a gift. Even a retarded person has a gift. When God made you, Dele, after he made you, he break your mold. There's nobody else that will be like you. We should stop copying one another. That's why even two identical twins their fingerprint is different. Their color of their eyes is different. Stay and live in original. Don't, you mustn't be any other person to become yourself. Have that sense of what and develop the characteristic God gives you. Find your gift and your generation will never miss you. So, um, that's why I can still, I preach in the streets. That's video that you see went viral. I was in Makoko Fish Market in a Butemeta. That's what where that thing was taken. Somebody did that for the first time trying to learn how to. I didn't know he put it in a detail and it went all over the world. That's I did that thing since I was 14 years. That's where I began. And uh, I am 62 today. I've never stopped it. I go on Saturday for evangelism Every Friday night, I go for night vigil. If our church doesn't have, I look for a friendly church around where I will go for vigil. That's the night club I go. And it will interest you that I am 65 years. I never, I don't own a television. I don't watch television. There's no TV in my house. I raise five children without TV. That's how I improve myself. I go to work, come back by 10 or 11, give my wife attention. I don't want another man talking and interfering in our discussion. So that, and that's why I've lived with my wife for 42 years. I've never raised my finger against her because we have time to talk. If I finish coming to office and we watch somebody who will take the remaining time by 6 o'clock, I jump out, I'm going to work. Then we are building things. Before you know it, it explodes. So, you need to, life is, you need to lose something to gain something. You need to, you don't, you can't make commitment without breaking egg. There are sacrifices you make for positions you attend in life. You need to see what works for you. So you can't go and say, because uh, Adenu guy is doing this, I must do it. I went to Dele's house. He has 40, a 40 inch television. I must have it in my life. I always ask myself, what are the values of that thing? How does those things help my vision? How does it collaborate with my vision? I don't even want you to be my friend if you are not going to help my vision to come to pass. Because you, 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 you need to ask person who... You don't want people who are going nowhere to become your friend. You, where are they going? They just want to sit down and talk about other people. So I want to choose people... When you have a vision for your life, it makes you live a narrow life. You, you choose people you are going to go with, people who will collaborate with the drive you have to make it come to pass. So that's why I live a life that people... Many times I go to preach with my motorbike. 
If I, I, can, I have BMW 1,600 cc, I have Suzuki 1,300 cc. If I drive it and fire the exhaust, people will gather. Then I will remove my gear and I will start talking. In one occasion, I spoke down and make out a call and 46 people gave their life to Christ. I took their name and followed up with them and got some of them baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. So that's the life I've lived since I was 14. And I'm not embarrassed to do it. There are people who, who are afraid about their faith. They are embarrassed about it. You know, they don't want you to know because you call them a religious fanatic. I am not embarrassed about what makes me. I am nothing. God made me everything I am. He owes my life. Jesus came to establish his kingdom on the earth. When he prayed, he said, Thy kingdom come. Bring the heavenly influence over this earth. Let's do on the earth the way they do in heaven. So I try to introduce people to this kingdom. When they get a heavenly influence over their life, their life is transformed, revolutionized. They have a sense of purpose and director, direction in life. So that's who I am. And I'm not embarrassed about it. If you like me for who I am, we become friends. If you don't like me, good luck to you. I go my way. Nobody has fire, nobody has hell or heaven to put anybody. And no individual has fire in his head. We are all human beings. I meet some people. They tell me, hey, you are not educated. I have PhD in physics. I tell him, does that make you more than a human being? There are something I know that you did not know with all your PhD. If you come to automobile industry, I, I talk to you like a, a child because I also have distinction there. So you need to have a sense of value. You are a human being to begin with. So whatever intellectualism you have doesn't take you off from being a human being. I respect people, but I don't fear people. So that's uh, the cosmos America that you are, you know. Finally, your wife is charity. What is your attitude to charitable causes? What is the attitude to charity? Coming again, the question. Charitable causes. How do, are you, how much of your wealth are you willing to give away? Oh, to help? Uh -huh. yes. <laughs> charity. Charity. Okay, <laughs> good, good. I get it. Mm -hmm. If you know Koshari's organization, social responsibility is in the DNA of our organization. And we cooperated in our mission statement. Koshari's will pro provide excellent products and services and will plow back resources to the society. Okay, so, because these are the people that made us. <laughs> we, Costaris built the only lecture law theater in UNM, University of Nigeria and Soka. We built the, the, six, the, the six luxurious flat, three-story building for Nandazikiwe University uh, uh, in the Newe. We tie road. We make borehole. During the COVID, we donated thousands of bags of rice to Lagos State, to River State, to different people in other states of the Federation. So uh, social responsibility is part of our corporate uh, DNA. Every year, we spend at least 3 to 4% of our earnings in corporate social responsibility. We believe in it, and that is what appropriate our organization. We put something back to the society. We have children who has no parents that are brilliant that we pay their school fees to university level. So these are ask questions so people will tell you. And it's not for me to... I'm being pushed to say this because it's not for me to advertise what we do. But just to let you know that CSL is in the DNA of our organization. Well, on this note... Chairman, I must thank you.